This video will contain spoilers from the off, so remember, you've been warned. The Idol has drawn to a close, and it's safe to say that the show was extremely underwhelming. With bags of potential within it to make a show that would have been interesting, engaging, and handled some extremely unique topics whilst also providing a dark insight into the music industry, this show fell short, and in a way, it became a parody of the very thing itself. So with that, I thought I'd break down everything that was wrong with the show, call out where it could have been improved, and discuss why the idol failed. The writing as a whole felt like something which was wrong with the show, but I'm going to break the elements of the writing down into different sections so it's more digestible. The amount of underdeveloped plots and plot holes. Within the idol, there were a lot of underdeveloped plots that we got the start of, but we never saw the end of, or even saw the consequences of the actions when they were developed. Things would just be brushed over, and it was almost like they would be forgotten between episodes, something which was a large reason as to why it felt like we couldn't really latch onto the plot that was moving forward. For example, to name a few, in the finale there was one that looked as though it was on the verge of being started, which was centred around Nikki stating that she wanted to work with Tadros, and that she saw the value in him because he was the reason as to why all of the talented individuals were in the same room. Plus, at the same time, we saw that Haim and Destiny were thinking of doing everything on their own and branching off from Nikki, but we saw nothing of that once the conversation was done. It was utterly pointless and would have actually made for an interesting side quest, but nope, it didn't go anywhere. We had the whole thing about finding out about Chloe and the fact that she was underage, yet nothing ever came of that. Chloe was this extremely interesting and quirky individual who at the start was almost like a deer in headlights and was amazed by everything that she was looking at to the point that she stood there watching Joss and Tedros be intimate with one another. I know, it was weird, but it was never delved into any further. They were almost like bullet points that were jotted down on a whiteboard that were branching off of the name Chloe, but they never actually had anything else that was coming off of them. So instead, we ended up with a character of Chloe that felt quite irrelevant and pointless to the story, despite there being a lot of focus on her. Another one was about Jenny's character, Diane. I understand what her character was used for in the show, as a way of highlighting how the industry can be quite brutal and lift you up and promise you your dreams, and then knock you down on the next breath. But I feel like there was barely any time that was spent on that premise, so we didn't really get to see or understand how it impacted the character. One episode, she was being promised everything and given a deal, and the next, she was just tossed to the side, so it didn't evoke the emotions or make us feel the weight and gravitas that I feel the show actually wanted us to feel in that moment. Plus, there was a lot of focus that was put on Jenny for being in the show, and I genuinely feel like out of about the five hours, she probably had about four or five minutes of screen time with next to no dialogue. Leia was a character that also had holes in her development. It felt like for the entirety of the season, she was going to be a character that assisted in the taking down of Tadros, due to her having a clear mind and knowing that something was up with him. But in the end, she just walked out and left, and didn't contribute to it in any way whatsoever. Joss didn't react to Leia leaving. Leia didn't say goodbye, and we never got to find out what was in the note, despite it most probably holding some importance, as they were extremely close. The biggest one for me, though, was the fact that the cult that Tadros was essentially the leader of did nothing in order to protect him or to stand by him. Previously, they cared so much for him and would do exactly as he would say. But then, in the final episode when Josh changed her mind about Tadros out of the blue, the group seemed to have done the same as well, which did baffle me. Because prior to that, literally one episode ago, they would do anything that he said and would speak highly of him and say how he gave them a chance. Where was this turning point for them? It was just rushed, and to be honest, it didn't make any sense. Plus, there were all of these guys with weapons that were constantly walking around. What was the point of that? They were never needed, nor was Tadros ever this guy that would do anything, so it was a bit of a weird inclusion. Tadros was a character that didn't necessarily have it all together, but he had a business that was thriving and managed to find talent. Yet, he let everything crumble underneath him so easily which again just didn't really make sense to me. It was like the show just decided to make him fail, and he did, with no real explanation. Other than a six weeks later text on screen and the understanding that there was an article written about him, there were so many holes in the development of the characters and the plots that it just made certain aspects of the show feel quite uncomfortable and staggered when watching, because things would change without ever having any real explanation or showcasing it to us. There were more than the ones I just mentioned, but they were most definitely the most important ones. The inappropriate and underwhelming ending. 
The ending of the finale and the direction that it went in was something that I just didn't quite get. I understood what happened. Joss took over the cult. She was basically the villain the whole time and was the master manipulator, not Tedros. But the show kind of tried to make us feel sorry for Tedros in the end, with the way that his life was destroyed and with him finding himself in the very position that Joss was in right at the start of the series, which I thought was just a bit wrong and a weird direction. Tedros was this large-scale manipulator, a controlling individual and not a nice person at all, and the show tried to switch it on its head in the last 10 minutes to make us feel bad for him, which just didn't work at all. There was no sense of redemption there with the character. He failed and Joss did him wrong, but he wasn't a nice person at all, so why would we care for his demise? If anything, he was the most unlikable character in the show for the most part. I also felt like the twist that the show tried to go for at the end in having Joss as this large-scale game player and becoming the cult leader just felt a bit forced and unnatural, and it wasn't executed in the smoothest way leaving a lot of individuals to basically wonder what had just happened and what it all meant. A twist needs to be understandable, and this was one that wasn't really. There were no seeds that were planted earlier on, and I feel Leia would have known what kind of individual Joss was truly like, and Leia didn't strike me as somebody that would be on board with that, so the reveal just fell flat. The amount of graphic scenes I don't need to talk about this section too much because I think we all know that this was a large reason as to why the show wasn't that great. The fact that you could probably piece together a half hour supercut of all of the graphic scenes and dialogue isn't a good thing. I don't know why they thought it would be good to waste valuable screen time with scenes that were just pointless to watch and brought nothing to the overarching story. From episode 1 to 4 it was just full of sections that were just a bit cringy to watch. And the problem is these scenes took up time where we could have had time focusing on the underdeveloped plots and holes that became present because they didn't get the time and attention that it needed. One thing that I will touch on and mention is the casting of Tedros. I just feel as though The weekend as this character didn't really work that great. His best performance was in the season finale because he had range to his acting ability, but for the most part his lines were quite cringy and he had about two or three facial expressions that he'd exhibit when performing. But with a more seasoned actor at the wheel, the character could have been a lot more convincing. It's a shame that the show has failed, and I would call it a failure because it has consistently received bad reviews every week, with the lowest rating being the season finale. But the sad thing is, there was a bunch of potential that was in there. We didn't need the twist, we could have just focused on Josh struggling in the industry and wanting to navigate a space where she wanted to be her true authentic self, even with her management forcing her in another direction, plus also battling with the grief that she felt due to the death of her mother. But I guess we'll never get to see that. So, there you have it. Why the Idol failed. If you want to see more videos such as Endings Explained, theories and predictions and character breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you'd like to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore, and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review next. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. Do you think the show was a failure? Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.